Hey everybody, it's AJ from Alpha Pixel, and today I am super excited to share with you guys what me and the team have been working on at Alpha Pixel these past several months. And what it is, is a hand-modeled font system modeled by our own Mike Hoyum, who is a professional modeler. Mike has designed and modeled multiple sets of fonts for this system. Everything from the uppercase, lowercase, all of the characters, all of the special characters, and also the numbers. So each font will be packed with everything you're going to need to to create the message you want to create with your model fonts. And while Mike was going through and developing each of these fonts by hand, we were off developing a plugin system that would let users easily work with the fonts and customize not only standard font properties such as kerning, tracking, all of that, but also letting you modify the shape properties of the fonts, such as the beveling and the face rounding. So if we go ahead and turn off the lines here, we're going to see, you can see how the face rounding is allowing us to catch the highlights in the front here. And I'll show that more in a minute here, but just to kind of give you a quick look at it. As where a normal font would have that flat front face, um, it would it's hard to sometimes catch those highlights, but here you can really dial in the look and catch every little reflection that your HDR or light setup has to offer. So let's go ahead and just jump right into a new scene here where, where I can give you a quick overview of how the system works. So here we are in a fresh scene, and so we start with the command plugin first, which you can find up here in the extensions um, under AP model fonts but I have it docked here along with the other alpha pixel free and paid plugins that we've developed um, that you can find over on the site but um, here at the end is our latest which is the alpha pixel model fonts with the little a here in the alpha pixel colors so we go ahead and click that we get a little dialog box and the first thing we get is the text box where you will type your message. So if we went ahead and typed something like, model fonts are out today, and then you go ahead and, and choose what font you want to generate your type in. So currently at launch, we have our two fonts. We have Stone Arch, which is our serif font, and we have Sans New, which is our Sans Serif font, and both are very good general purpose fonts. Um, we wanted to start with fonts that were the most versatile to work with for most case situations and we'll be adding more fonts as we go. So let's go ahead and select the stone arch font and hit generate. And you'll see instantly our type generates in our scene. Um, and we can turn on the lines just to kind of see all of the beautifully modeled fonts that Mike made. So, and then you'll see the object that popped into our object manager here is the 612 Stone Arch, which is the font that we chose. And then if you twirl that open, you'll see our whole message there. Um, but you shouldn't need to twirl that open because when you select letters for modification, you're actually gonna select them in the viewport. So if you were to say wanting to kern uh, a few of the letters, you just select them in the viewport and you can slide them and all of the other letters will, after it, will follow along with it. And you can go up and down with it. Typically easier to work with in the front view. So along with the kerning, which is very intuitive right there in the viewport, you have other properties here. So you'll see this tag here with the A, we'll select that. And if we actually jump back into the um, perspective view, you can see our we have letter depth as our first option, which pretty self-explanatory. We'll just control your extrusion. And then one of my personal favorite options here is the face rounding. And to kind of get a better look at that, let's just create a new um, kind of metal material really fast here. Just to add a simple Beckman to it. You want to drop it onto the model fonts null there. So let's go ahead and turn off our lines and get up close here and you can see it a little bit better. Now it is catching reflections, but it's just kind of based on whatever is directly in front of it. But if we go back into our tag here and dial up the face rounding, you'll see immediately that it's just super, it's just very nicely catching those highlights and reflections in within the front of the type there. 
So we can crank that up pretty extreme if we want to. Make it really bubbly in the front. But of course we can always dial that back. And then along with that we have the edge bevel amount, which we can dial up further too. You can get your type looking really gooey if you dial them both up together. But if that's not the look you're after, then just tone it back a little bit here. And then we have our bevel mitering, which, um, are very, which is very similar to what you'll see in the bevel deformer options. So if we go ahead and turn on the lines, you can kind of see as you, you know, def start deforming your type and you might start seeing some pinching in certain areas, you can actually just dial this in and it will modify the way the corners are handled with your beveling if you run into any issues. And of course you could disable that if you want while leaving your settings intact. Um, and then subdivisions are what you'd expect. They This just handles how um, it's both displayed in the viewport and how it, how it will render out. So we can crank that down all the way down if we want, down to its most basic level. And while the edge flow may look simple, we've had, we've gone through countless versions of these models tweaking sometimes down to the vertex, getting every single letter, number, character just right. And then moving on, we can go ahead and disable subdivisions if we need to, um, while also leaving that intact. And then if we go in the front view, you'll see that we have our word spacing. And if we dial that up, that's just going to increase the gap between each of the words, as you'd expect. And then same with the tracking. Um, that just adjusts the spacing between everything, every individual letter, as well as the spaces between. Um, and if you crank that in there. And then, as I mentioned, you can go ahead and select each letter in the viewport and kern it out just by selecting the letter and moving it. And then we have a reset button, which will reset the font to its default, just as if you had just generated the type. So we hit that, and you'll see it kind of popped back out where we originally had it. And then our last option is to bake the fonts. So, so this will bake them down into geometry that you can use if you need to you know, tweak vertexes or anything else or for any reason you might need them as solid geometry. So we can go ahead and hit bake. And you'll notice that it actually, if I undo here, you'll notice in the editor it's at a subdivision of one, but when I baked it actually increased the subdivision, so it will always bake at the render level. So if I hit bake, you'll see that it kind of increased in subdivision there. Um, if I undo that and go back to a subdivision of one on the renderer and bake, you'll see it's just as I had seen it in the viewport. So now we can twirl down our null and you'll see that each of the letters are their own individual geometry, which you could then group if you wanted to group into one big geometry. <clears throat> And then if I jump back really fast, I'm just going to show you that if you want to go ahead and add deformers into this, um, I'm going to actually bring the subdivision level down right now. If you want to add deformers onto your model fonts, you can definitely do that. Um, if we go ahead into the, uh, let's try the squash and stretch here. And I'm going to increase the letter depth a little bit. Now you're not going to want to twirl this down and drop your deformer in here or it's going to kind of mess with things, mess with the calculations of everything. So you're just going to want to leave your deformer above and just group the two together. Now anything under this null, any deformers under this null will affect your model font. So if I then go to the factor and affect that, we are getting our squishy font here. Whoops. Now I can kind of pull the deformer up and down to adjust that. Um, but you can see that even with this lower subdivision, the fonts are just deforming very nicely. And if we go ahead and kind of mess with that a little bit, you can kind of see it even better. I might need to just scale it up to grab everything, but if it's not quite 
subdivided enough for you, you can go ahead and tweak that live here and add another level if you need to. Things are looking kind of crazy right now. Let me see if I tone back the uh, extrusion there. <laughs> But everything is holding up very nicely with how detailed and uniform the edge flow is. Let's actually just try one more deformer here. <clears throat> Let's do an FFD. Let's just actually um, delete that real fast and create one new font or one new piece of type. Let's do squish. Actually, I'm going to make it capital squish. And I'm actually even going to add in some little characters in there too. And I'm going to do sans new this time. And here we have our font um, in the sans new style. And I'm going to add in an FFD real fast. Group that together. And we are actually going to modify it here in the attribute manager so we don't mess things up. I'm going to kind of go into the front view to make sure I have it all set right. Kind of bring down the Z value a little bit. And there we have it. Now we can go ahead and modify the FFD. And if we kind of grab these and pinch them in, it was kind of works similar to how the squash and stretch is. Um, the kind of nice thing is that you can grab that front vertex and kind of really pull it out, which is going to give you a nice kind of rounded edge as well. So if I drop the metal on there again, kind of hide the deformer and the uh, lines there. You can see how well everything holds up and it's really deforming nicely and catching those highlights really nice as well. It's kind of fun to even kern it while it's still live in the deformation. Anyway, that is the overview of the model font system and we are super excited to finally share it with you guys. And the fonts are available for purchase right now. You can definitely head over to the website and check it out for more information. And on top of modeling these beautiful fonts, Mike has generously made you guys a free e-scooter model to check out. And um, you can actually see his amazing modeling skills firsthand before you even buy these fonts and just see the little details and perfect edge flow he puts into his models. We'll have more fonts available very soon. You can actually go ahead and vote on which font you guys want modeled next um, in the newsletter. Um, if you're not signed up you can go on the website and sign up for the newsletter where you will get models freebies discounts all that stuff as well as the opportunity to participate in voting on the next font for model fonts so head on over there and check that out we will have more tutorials freebies plugins and all that coming soon so stay tuned and we will see you in the next tutorial